Well, today, guys, I want to give you a message that I prepared literally just last week. It's having my devotions, and God began to speak to me from a passage of Scripture in Genesis 15 that I believe might just be the Word of the Lord that you need in the middle of this COVID crisis. And I want to talk to you today about dreams. And in particular, I want to talk to you about the fragility of dreams, the fragility of dreams. Because if there's one thing I know to be true about God, it is that God wants every single one of us to have a dream. When He begins to move in a life, one of the things that happens is He awakens us to dreams. In fact, you can tell when God's moving in the lives of people because those people come alive with a dream. It says in Joel 2 verse 28 that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And it says your young men are going to dream dreams and your old men are going to have visions. It's a sign that God is moving when dreams and visions begin to come alive. And it's the desire of God that we would have dreams. But in seasons like this, we come face to face with the fragility of our dreams, the illusionary nature of dreams. And it's true about dreams that dreams in one moment of our lives can just appear so vibrant, so alive, so tangible, so real. It's like it's literally right in front of you. But the truth is a couple of circumstances, a couple of setbacks, a couple of failures, a couple of denials, a couple of losses, and suddenly a dream that was so clear in our lives one moment, so tangible and so real, can just appear in the next moment like it's a distant fantasy And we're looking upon it like it was just a daydream that we had in one moment of our past. And I don't believe for a second that God is wanting you and I to give up on our dreams. I don't don't believe God wants this COVID crisis to allow us to be robbed of our dreams. In fact, I was in prayer yesterday and I felt like the Lord just spoke to me and said that in this COVID crisis, there is actually a spirit of fear that is trying to exploit this crisis to rob people, to steal our dreams. That's why I want to talk to you today about dreams because I believe the dream God gave for you is powerful. The intention of your dream from God is that you would see it, shape your identity around your dream, come alive because of your dream, reach for more because of your dream, and the devil is after that dream. So with that in mind, let's turn to Genesis chapter 15 and let's dive into the life today of what I believe to be the greatest dreamer in the Bible. I mean, when you look at Abraham and his dream, God gave him a dream. He sold all for that dream, left everything for that dream. He he lived in another land his entire life for that dream. God gave him the dream and it took 500 years for that dream to become a reality. Generations were needed for his dream to come alive. But God gave him this dream and God said to him, I'm going to make you into a nation, into a people. I'm going to cause you to have descendants as innumerable as the stars that are in the sky. I'm going to give you all the land that you can see, Abraham. Walk it, see it, touch it, be amongst it, because all that your eye can survey, I'm going to give all of that to you. And the Bible says that God gave to him that dream. But when we dive into his life, Abraham is not alive with that dream. We discover Abraham and the fragility of the dream that God had given to him. Let's read Genesis 15, starting in verse 1. The Bible says, Sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision and said to him, Do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you and your reward will be great. But Abram replied, O sovereign Lord, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? Since you have given me no children, Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household, will inherit all of my wealth. You have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the Lord said to him, No, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Then the Lord took him outside and said, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abram believed the Lord and the Lord credited it to him as righteousness. Here in this amazing passage, we've got Abraham 
this great dreamer, this great visionary, this man who is believing for a nation and a people and a land, is at a season in his life where in order for his dream to become a reality, he needs one thing. He needs a son. Without a son, his dream has no future. Without a son, this thing doesn't have legs. One of the, in fact, the very first thing we learn about Abraham and his wife Sarah is in Genesis 11, not 12. And in Genesis 11, we learn that Sarah was unable to become pregnant and they had no children. So he's seeing a nation, but what he needs is a son. And when I read that tension between the nation that he sees and the son that he needs, I thought about every single one of us, how often in our lives it's like that. We have a dream and the dream is big and the dream is out there and the dream could make a real difference in the world. But what we need is often one answer prayer, one change of circumstance. We've got a dream to prosper. What we really need is a job to break through. We've got, we've got a dream that we can make a difference in media, but we actually just need an opening in the industry. We've got a promise and a dream that came to us from God that years of ill health are going to be replaced by vibrant health and full vitality and you know, limitless movement and joy in our hearts. But right now, what we really need is a few health stats to move forward. And it's amazing the tension between the dreams that we're experiencing in the now. Because when in the now, the things that we're praying for and needing are quickly coming to pass in our lives, then our dreams seem very close, very tangible, plausible and real. But what happens to us in our lives when the things that we're praying for, needing, hoping for, wanting, are not coming to pass quickly? When instead, of tracking forward in our dream, maybe in the COVID crisis, you're actually moving backwards. You've got a dream and in order for that dream to become real in your life, there needs to be this movement. There needs to be this progression. Well, what happens when you're believing for things to go forward, but actually they're going backward? What happens in our lives when we come face to face with unanswered prayer and setback and denial and things aren't going the way we want? It's in moments like that where we discover the fragility of dreams. And Abraham and Sarah, they're in the middle of this environment where they're praying for the son. And for 30 years, they're believing for this boy to be theirs. They need him in order for the dream to become real. I mean, get into their story. Get into their moment. Here we've got this powerful couple who've left it all for a dream, given everything to pursue a dream. And all they need for that dream to get started is one son. And that one son hasn't arrived in their lives. Sarah goes through menopause. She no longer can give birth to children. Everything is pending on that. They're all needing that. And suddenly, everything that looked like it was going to become a reality is fading away from their grasp. Fear raises its ugly head. And their dream is dying on the inside of them. And you know, we're in a season that's very much like Abraham and Sarah's, where right now so many of the things that we hoped to happen in our lives aren't happening. And in moments like that, when instead of moving forward, we're moving backward, it's easy for us to have fear raise its ugly head in us and for our dreams to die on the inside of us as well. And I think we're going to look back one day and say that one of the greatest challenges of this global pandemic, other than the obvious things of health and economic impacts, is that the circumstances that seem so out of our control could have the potential in this global pandemic to cause us to lose the fragile dreams that are within us. And I believe this is why for us, my friends, we need to look at this today because in our lives, God doesn't want you to be without a dream. And dreams, dreams can seem so alive in one moment and so real in one season. It's like you could almost touch them, but dreams are fragile. And the same thing that seems so there and so right next to you is so easily destroyed all at the same time. The vibrancy of one moment can easily become a distant mirage in another moment. And everything can come tumbling down. And our dreams can just as easily when fear is awakened in our lives, be replaced and no longer do we have a dream, but we have a nightmare. And when we dive into this passage of scripture, we dive 
into Abraham's life where he ain't living the dream. He's living a nightmare instead. If you want to get a, a, a look at his nightmare, just read the passage because the Bible says in verse 1 that God comes to him and he addresses his fear. He says, Abram, don't be afraid. And guys, I feel like the Lord just wants to say to you three things from verse number 1 in this passage of Scripture that may be just what you need to hear today. Don't be afraid. Don't let fear become the, the governor of your emotions. Don't let fear be the determiner of your decisions. Don't let fear change your outlook and rob you of your dreams. Because the second thing that God said to him is, I will protect you. And I just want you to know, I'm grateful to live in a good country with a good economy and a good government. But the truth is though, friends, I'm not looking for the economy or the government to save me. I'm looking to God and He is able to look after you, to protect you. He's got your back in the middle of this crisis. And God is able to look after his people in Jesus' name. And then God said to him, And Abraham, not only should you not let fear in, and not only am I the one who's going to protect you, but your reward is going to be great. And then the Bible says that in verse 2 and in verse 3, Abraham gives voice to God for his nightmare. He says, What good is my dream? What good is my purpose? When I have no son, and this is what he's been playing out, I'm going to die childless. Sarah is already past the age of bearing children. Eliezer of Damascus is going to get everything that I've accumulated. This dream that I've staked my life on is about to come tumbling down. There is no future. There is no way forward. And if you're feeling right now in the middle of this COVID crisis, like the fragility of your dream is just... That dream is passing from you and it's becoming something that's in the ether. And in the here and now, you're in doubting about what God can do in your life. Then I want you to hear what God did for Abraham. Four things. And I want to give you four things today. Four steps God took Abraham through to revive that fragile dream. And I've just got this picture. I've been having it as I've been praying for today, like those big fans where they would squeeze the side and compress air and burst it forth from a nozzle at the front and embers in a fire would come back to life again. And I just have a feeling like there have been dreams that people have allowed to just ebb away. Maybe you're questioning the validity of your dream or the viability of your future, doubting whether you're going to see tomorrow and whether what you really believe God's called you to do is going to come to pass just because of the crisis we're in right now. And I feel like God in these next four points is just wanting to stir your life and fan that dream into flame because my friend, your dream is your purpose. It's what God has for you. God never made a promise and didn't fulfill it. And if God could bring an Isaac to Abraham, then it doesn't matter what kind of delay or setback or denial or loss we're suffering in the moment. I'm empathetic for it, but I'm here to tell you, it doesn't change the ability and the will of God for you in the middle of this crisis. And I reckon some people need to shout amen in their home right now. Well, let's dive into it. There are four things. The first thing that we find is actually what took place in verse two and three as the first thing we discover is that God gave safe voice for his fears. God gave Abraham a safe voice for his fears. He gave him a place to bring his fears. Because the truth is that one of the greatest danger uh, of fear is that fear becomes like a place in our minds of darkness and then in the middle of this dark place, we start growing a worldview and a perspective and an outlook and start forming in our lives what we believe is going to happen next. And God said to Abraham, it's time, buddy, for the fears that you've been rehearsing, for the nightmare that you've been living in to find its way, not just from in the channels of your mind, but to find its voice in your life because it's in here but it's time to get it out here. Abraham, it's time for you to hear what you've been saying to yourself. He's saying your perspective is dangerous if it's formed alone and with fear living in your heart. And my friends, no matter who you are, when the ridiculous starts sounding rational in your life is when you need to find a safe place for the thoughts that you're thinking. 
This is why for me, whenever I find fear raising its ugly head, I've learned a key and I want to give it to you today that I believe will help you. Whenever fear raises its head in my life, whenever I'm thinking that everything's about to come tumbling down, I take my fears and I turn them into prayers. I write them in the form of prayers in my journal to God. Never steal my journal, by the way. If you ever did, you'd think I'm neurotic because often it's not just the highs. I don't bring my highs as prayers. Often when I need to journal is when I need to take the moments when I think life is about to come tumbling down and just lay it out there for, for me to hear, for me to see, and for God to then breathe on. And Abraham says, God, this is what's going on in my life. And God became the safe voice for his fears. Don't make your fears the decider of your decisions, the commentary that you make on social media. Make your fears what you bring to God and let him be the safe sounding board for what you're thinking on the inside of you. Because the second thing that I find is actually found in verse four, where the Bible says that God came to Abraham and he began to speak. And this is the second thing that God did. God discredited his doubts. God came to him and Abraham says, this is what's going to happen. And God said, no, no, Abraham, that's not what's going to happen. And I just feel like there are maybe a couple of thousand people right now that fears have been growing on the inside of you. And I'm so excited I can stand up and start preaching, honestly, because I feel like the Lord is saying to you, no, the fears you've been rehearsing are not going to come to pass in your life. The end that you're predicting is not going to be what you're going to walk in. This thing that you're thinking is going to cause everything to come tumbling down is smaller than the might and the power of the God that we worship. And God's saying, no. No, I bind that thought, I rebuke that lie, I expose that deception because you are not going to come tumbling down, my friend. And just remember in the middle of this COVID crisis that the greatest arena of battle we have against the devil is not out there, but right in here. Our thoughts are the primary battlefield that we have against the devil. And remember about the devil that its primary language is lies. Jesus said, that's the devil's native language is lies. So the devil's going to come to you and me and he's going to whisper in your ear because of this four weeks of lockdown, you're never going to have a thriving business because of, because of this COVID crisis. You're never going to fulfill your dream of global travel. Because of this COVID crisis, you're never going to get promoted in your job. The economy is going to go down. You're not going to find a way. You can't provide for your children. Everything's about to suffer. This is the end of your journey. And then that moment, we can lose those fragile dreams. And God is saying, no, I rebuke that lie. I take authority over it. This is not the end for you. I've got more for you. And God said to him, I'm arresting these lies in your mind. And God discredited his doubts. The third thing that God did was God refocused his gaze. And this is so important for us as we're trying to deal with these doubts and fears that rob us of our dreams. In order for the dream to come back to the centrality of who we are, God had to refocus Abraham's gaze. Abraham's in a tent in the night. Right now we're locked up in our houses. We can't leave. We have little exposure to certain things that we need in order to make us feel alive. And God said, Abraham, Come outside your tent, look up at the stars, see them, see their glory, see their majesty, see their wonder. And if there's one thing I think God wants for us, we can learn from Abraham in this passage, and I think we could grab it straight and pull it into this COVID crisis, is we need every single one of us a wonder project. We need a wonder project, wonder, awe, majesty, worship, splendor, to see something that fills us with this feeling of awe and wonder is a reality that we need in our lives. So God said to Abraham, here's your wonder project, buddy. Start counting those stars. See if you can number the number of stars. And God left him abandoned, not to his circumstance, but to the stars. He said, buddy, get your eye out of your current challenges and get them on the might and the power of God. And I want to encourage you guys, worship in this COVID crisis. 
Pray in this COVID crisis. Go for some walks. Get awakened to the glory of God. Get a wonder on the inside of you to lift you, not from the circum, not into the circumstances, but towards the power and the ability of God. Get lifted towards what He can do in your life. And my friends, it can have the power, a wonder can, to lift us beyond these circumstances that can become far too dominant in our view. And the fourth thing God said to him, God came to him and God reaffirmed his dream. In awe and in wonder, distracted from the fears, God exposing the lies for what they really are. As Abraham stood there looking at those majestic stars, God said to him, Abraham, so shall your descendants be. He fanned that dream. He breathed upon that dream. He said, Abraham, you might be suffering loss, setback. 30 years you've been waiting for this child, but I'm still moving in your life. I'm still the great I am. I'm still here. And my friends, when the things around us don't line up with the dream that we believe God's given to us, in those moments, we need to hone our lives even closer and say, all I'm doing, I'm not giving more time for my fear. I'm not giving more time to my worry. I'm not rehearsing my loss. I'm coming closer and closer to you, God. Because it is true. If everything around us is easy, our dream seems so plausible. But when God is close to you, my friend, then it doesn't matter what's around you. When God is close to you, those same dreams become plausible. And I believe that today, right now, God is breathing life into fragile dreams. I can sense His presence right where I am, and I believe He's touching you in your home. And no matter who you are, what's going on in your life, I'm gonna pray for you right now that those fragile dreams that are in your life are about to come alive again. You just receive this prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you that for your people right now, I, I, Holy Spirit, I sense you here. And I pray right now over every person that dreams that have been diminishing or fears that have been raising their head. Firstly, I bind every lie of the devil. I say to you, Satan, get out of every mind. I rebuke the thoughts that perhaps their dreams are gonna come tumbling down. And in the name of Jesus, I just give, Lord, credibility to the dream that you gave to them. I stir those dreams to life. Lord, may we know resurrection of our dreams in this moment right now. Quicken your people, breathe life to your people. Give us fresh vision encounters in our homes right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus.